Hey everyone, welcome to another video of the Buster Monkey. Today I'm gonna show you my top five tools that I use all the time in Photoshop that are definitely going to improve your workflow on your next painting or whatever you're doing in Photoshop. They're not hidden features or anything too fancy, but if used in a smart way or you're kinda new to Photoshop, I completely encourage you to get used to them. And by the way, they're in a random order, so there's not more or less important. But enough talking, let's dive into them. Number one, brush size. This is a super simple shortcut that allows you to increase and decrease the size of your brush just by scrolling right or left with your pen instead of opening all the time this window and change the size this way. It doesn't take long, I know, but believe me, when you get used to this, you are never going back. How does it work? On Mac, it works by pressing Ctrl and Option at the same time while I'm in the brush mode here. I can select any brush that I have. Control option right, control option left, decrease. Super super easy and of course it works with your eraser as well. Once you master this you're gonna become super fast and it's gonna save you lots of time. If you click control option and you go up and down you're gonna change your opacity instead. See, my opacity is changing from 0 to 100. So make sure you lock right or left for the size, otherwise you might change your opacity accidentally and you can see the opacity here very quickly on the top left. Have fun with this. Tip number two, clipping mask. This is one of my favorite actually because it allows you to be non-destructive on your painting. It can be used in many ways and it saves you lots of time. Basically you create a new layer, right click on the new layer, create clipping mask. The layer snaps into the layer below, you will see a little arrow popping up. What that means is that everything you paint in that layer is gonna stay in the shape of the layer below that. Look at this, my layer right now is the brown, on top of the brown I have my clipping mask and everything I paint in there stays in that layer. Let me turn off the ink real quick. This way I don't have to worry to paint out. Of course if I decide to release the clipping mask, this is still a normal layer, so I have all the mess that I did below. A shortcut that you can use to create a clipping mask instead of do right click is to click Alt in between the two layers that you want to clip. Basically this icon will show up and that means that you can just click and create it or release it. This is super helpful because I'm not touching the original layer at all. I can keep modifying the layer on the top forever. Of course you can use it with everything in Photoshop. So for example I can drag and drop an image, scale it a little bit, put it on top of my layer, I'll click between the two, boom, clipping mask done. And now I can see, I can still modify my layer. I can warp it, I can do all the customization that I want to do to have my base, for example, or whatever. Another thing that you can do with clipping mask is to do it with groups. For example, I have paint. This is a big group with all my colors, all my flat colors in there. What I can do is to create a new layer, hit clipping mask on top of the group, and boom, voila! Everything I do in this layer is gonna affect my whole group. One last thing about this. I can just drop an adjustment layer, for example, hue and saturation, clipping mask to the whole group, and boom, done. I can change everything without actually working on the real layers of it. Try to be creative with clipping mask. There are tons of ways it can make your workflow faster, better, and I'm sure it's gonna allow you to make more changes and testing more without destroying your work. Tip number three, lock your alpha. Contrary to the clipping mask, if you build a little bit of confidence on your painting or you want to save some uh, memory of your computer, you can just click on the layer that you want to do it and click this little icon here. When it's locked like this, you're only going to be painting inside the shape of your layer. You can see the difference here. It kind of does what the clipping mask is, but directly on the layer. So it's actually erasing information of your brown. It doesn't exist anymore in this case. At the same time, it's not adding layers. Again, it's a very good way to divide things and keep them clean, but at the same time you have to know what you're doing. You'll find yourself using this a lot together with a clipping mask. Of course you can switch off just by clicking back this little icon and the little lock disappears. And right now we can paint everywhere. Tip number four, check your values correctly. 
This is something I do in every painting. It doesn't matter what I do, even photography, whatever I do, I always want to check my values. The correct way to do it is to create a new layer that you want to put on top of everything, fill it with white and put it in color. This is a super quick tip that allows you to understand how your painting is working with values. It gets rid of lots of information that can distract you from the readability and allows you to know immediately if you need to push back the background more or to push the foreground a little stronger or whatever you have to do to separate the elements better. Tip number five, save your workspace. As you can see, I don't have the typical workspace that you have in default Photoshop. After you actually install Photoshop, you might just have essential 3D motion, painting, photography and graphic and web. It can take a while to understand exactly what we need and what we don't need. But what you want is a clean workspace that has only the things that you actually use. My workspace changes a lot. It's changed a lot throughout the years. And this is actually what I feel comfortable with today. It has all the tools that I need, uh, mostly all the tabs that I need. And that's it. As you can see, my clean side is completely clean and everything is on the right side where my hand is so I never lose the painting under my eye. I'm not going too many details on how to move all these windows around and what every window does. But basically when you're happy with what you have, let's say I'm gonna move this stuff here, move this stuff here, navigator goes here. When you like what you have, you can go on window, workspace, new workspace, and you wanna click all of this because maybe you're gonna change some shortcuts. You wanna give it a name. Look at two, boom. And now it's part of my workspace on the top right of my screen. And if I click back on Luca, I would simply get back into my regular workspace. Of course, it works with multiple monitors. If you have another screen that you wanna pull up some windows in there, you can do it, you can save it, and it is gonna remember that you have another screen. That was it, my friends. I hope you've learned something. And believe me, once you start using them, not only you're gonna be faster, but you're gonna have more control over your work and for a better result. Let me know what you think. Let me know what's your favorite out of this list. And please let me know what you wanna see next. As always, thanks a lot for the amazing support, guys, on all the social media that I have. Please make sure to subscribe, click on the bell to get notified when a new video is out. And if you have a friend that you think might be interested in this stuff, please just feel free to share the video. Also check out my prints on ArtStation if you wanna buy some of my paintings, it, everything is there, awesome quality, awesome price. All right, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>